Let's say that you want to add a rechargeable battery to a DIY project. How would you do that? Well, one way is to get one of these cheap popular modules. They can charge a single lithium-ion battery and have built-in protection features. If you want a specific and constant output voltage, you can throw in one of these voltage boosters. You simply adjust the output voltage according to the needs of your project and you're good to go. And if you want to be extra fancy, you can add a battery level meter like this one. These modules are all cheap and easy to use, which begs the question, why did I bother making my own battery management circuit board? Well, even though all these modules work, they have their limitations and it's time to find something better. For the past few months, I've been looking for alternatives that combine battery charging and a voltage booster into a single chip. Eventually, I decided to try this one, the IP5189T, which, not surprisingly, is designed for power banks. In fact, I made this entire module allowing me to access all the features available on the chip and test how well they work. So how is this module better than the ones that I can already buy for a few cents? Well, I get battery charging and protection, a voltage booster and battery level meter from a single chip. The output is not adjustable, it is fixed at 5 volts, but that is good enough for many projects. What is adjustable is the charging current. It goes up to 2.1 amps and can be set using a potentiometer. Meanwhile, these modules come pre-configured for 1 amp, which is their maximum, and if you need a lower current, you have to change a tiny resistor. On my module, I can also configure the nominal and the maximum voltages of the battery. You cannot do that on the other module. If I want to, I can connect a thermistor that monitors the temperature of the battery for safety. The cheaper module has this feature disabled. Another key advantage is that my module can charge a battery even when there is a load connected to it. The cheaper modules are not designed to do that. The USB Type-C port, it actually works, unlike the ones that they have on the cheaper modules. You will see why in a bit. And if that's not enough, there is even a built-in flashlight functionality on this chip. Now, you may be wondering where I got this beautiful PCB from. Well, I designed it myself and had it professionally manufactured by JLC PCB, the sponsor of this video. Uh, 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 don't skip, because making your own PCBs is easier and cheaper than you think. This is Easy EDA, a free and easy to use online PCB design tool. It is where I designed the circuit and the PCB for my project, following the detailed guidelines provided in the datasheet for the chip. Then I converted the schematic to a PCB and laid out the components in a way that made sense. After that, I uploaded my design files to JLC PCB and got an instant quote of $2 for manufacturing 5 copies of the PCB. It doesn't get any cheaper than this. And shipping worldwide is just as affordable. JLC PCB can also solder the components for you, which is a service I took advantage of, as you can probably tell. For tiny SMD components like the chip in my design, this service makes things so much easier. But it gets even better. JLC PCB is now running special discounts on 6-layer PCBs for more advanced projects. I'll have a link for you below to take a look. And if you want to make the coolest PCBs ever, you can try the full color solder mask option by JLC PCB and add your own color graphics to your boards. Check out JLC PCB at the link in the description. Now back to the project. These are the PCBs that I got and they're almost ready for action. I just need to add a few extra components first. I'll start with the four LEDs for the battery meter and after that I'm adding a big white LED for the flashlight. Then come these two connectors, one for the battery and another for the boosted output of 5 volts. The thermistor that monitors the battery temperature gets connected to these two points over here, but I have bypassed it for now because I do not need temperature monitoring at this point. These two sets of pin headers are for configuring the battery voltage settings. This one sets the nominal voltage of the battery to 3.7 volts, but I can set it to 3.6 volts if I move it to the other side. And this set of jumpers is for configuring the maximum voltage of the battery. By default it is set to 4.2 volts, but I can set it to 4.35 or 4.4 volts if I have a battery that can handle that voltage. I am now adding a precision potentiometer to control the maximum charging current. It's a good idea to have a way to adjust it, because smaller batteries tend to require lower charging currents. 
This is the first time I am using a USB Type-C connector on a project like this and it was interesting to find out that a Type-C port, like uh, on this power bank, will not just give me 5 volts like an old Type-A connector would. For that to happen, I had to connect a couple of 5.1 kilo ohm resistors between the CC1 and CC2 pins of the receiving connector and ground. Having them makes it possible to power my module from another USB Type-C device. These cheaper modules do not have these resistors, which explains why they do not work if you try to power them from a Type-C port. Ok, at this point I think I can power the module on for the first time. For this I'll be using a power bank and a Type-C to Type-C cable and just in case I do not have a battery connected to it yet. Alright, let's see what happens. For some reason the module is thinking that it's charging a battery, even though there's nothing connected to it. I'm reading voltage at the connectors, 4.25 volts at the one for the battery and uh, 5.2 volts at the output. Ok, now let's connect the battery to the module and see if it will charge it. Here I have an 18650 battery in its holder, it is connected to the module and my multimeter is going to measure the current going into the battery. Now let's connect the power bank to the module. The lights are on, this is a good sign. And there's about 1 amp flowing into the battery right now. But I'm noticing something strange, the battery indicator is not accurate because I discharged this battery before starting this test. I suspect this battery might be faulty, so let me replace it with this battery pack and see what happens. With the new battery pack the battery level indicator is more accurate and I'm getting more current going into the battery. Now let's test if I can change the charging current. I was able to get 2.1 amps, the maximum that this chip supports, and the minimum charging current that I got was 0.6 amps. Unfortunately, I've noticed a problem. When the battery is being charged at the maximum current setting, the output voltage drops to about 4.6 volts. When the input voltage is disconnected, the output goes back to normal. I don't know if this is an issue with the chip or maybe there's a flaw with my design, maybe I didn't use the best inductor for the job. If you have any guesses or suggestions, leave them in the comments. Now I'm going to connect this big 4 ohm resistor across the output. I want to see how much current I can get. And it looks like I'm getting 2.1 amps, exactly the maximum output supported by the chip. And despite the heavy load, the output is stable at 5 volts. One downside I just discovered, if the output load is too small, like this LED light, the chip will go into standby mode in a few seconds. This is not a surprise, a lot of power banks do that, but I don't know if there's a way to disable this feature. According to the datasheet, the chip goes into standby mode if the load is smaller than 45 milliamps. The good news is that the output voltage is very stable and clean, I don't have to worry about noise ruining my audio projects. In conclusion, this seems to be a good chip for power banks, but for DIY projects it's not quite ideal. It can provide a decent amount of power and charge a battery quickly, but the automatic standby feature is annoying and I'm not sure how to deal with the voltage drop when the battery is charging. Still, this was a fun little project, but if I ever try to make anything like this, I will probably use two separate chips, one for battery charging and another for voltage boosting. This should give me more control over the output voltage and hopefully get rid of the automatic standby. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my future videos.